Welcome to Learn with Manzi. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic, how to say no to friends and family while balancing your personal relationships. Saying no can be challenging, especially when it involves those we care about, but it's a skill worth mastering to maintain a healthy balance in life. Let's explore some strategies to handle this delicate situation. One, understand your priorities. Before you say no, it's essential to understand your own priorities. Reflect on your personal goals, commitments and needs. Ask yourself, what are the most important things in your life right now? Maybe it's advancing in your career, spending quality time with your immediate family or focusing on your mental and physical health. Understanding your priorities helps you make decisions that align with your values. For example, if you're committed to finishing a project by a certain deadline, it's easier to say no to a spontaneous outing. By prioritizing, you're being honest with yourself and others about what you can handle. This doesn't mean you don't care about your friends or family. It simply means you're respecting your own time and energy. Two, communicate clearly and kindly. When you decide to say no, communication is key. It's important to be both clear and kind in your delivery. Instead of vague responses like, I'll see if I can make it, which can lead to confusion, be upfront, I'm unable to attend because of prior commitments. Here's why this works. Clear communication leaves no room for misinterpretation. Your friends and family will appreciate your honesty, even if they're initially disappointed. Kindness in your tone and choice of words also softens the impact. For instance, you might say, I really wish I could help, but I have other obligations that I can't reschedule. This approach shows that you respect their request while staying true to your own needs. 3. Offer an alternative solution. When you can't fulfill a request, offering an alternative is a great way to show that you still care. For example, if you're asked to help with an event but can't make it, you could suggest someone else who might be able to assist or propose another time to catch up. Alternatives provide a way to say no without completely shutting down the possibility of being involved. It also shows that you're willing to be flexible within your limits. This can go a long way in maintaining positive relationships as it demonstrates that you're not just thinking about your own needs, but theirs as well. 4. Be honest about your limits. It's important to be honest about your limits. This means recognizing when you're stretched too thin and being upfront about it with others. For example, if you're feeling overwhelmed with work, it's perfectly okay to say, I'm currently swamped with projects and can't take on anything else at the moment. Honesty about your limits can prevent burnout and helps others understand your situation better. This level of transparency can actually strengthen your relationships because it builds trust. People will know that when you say yes, you truly mean it. And when you say no, it's because you need to take care of yourself. 5. Practice assertiveness. Assertiveness is all about standing up for your own needs while respecting others. It's a balance between being too aggressive and too passive. Practicing assertiveness involves using I statements, such as I can't take on this extra task right now or I need to focus on my own projects at the moment. Being assertive doesn't mean you're being selfish or uncaring. It's about expressing your needs in a way that is respectful to both you and the other person. For example, if a friend asks you to help move on a weekend when you've planned to rest, you might say, I need this weekend to recharge, but I'd love to help you out another time. Assertiveness can feel uncomfortable at first, especially if you're used to being a people pleaser, but it's a crucial skill for maintaining healthy boundaries. 6. Set boundaries in advance. To avoid difficult situations, set boundaries in advance. If you know you need to focus on work or personal projects, let friends and family know ahead of time. For example, if you're entering a particularly busy season at work, you could say, for the next few weeks I'll be focused on a big project, so I may not be as available as usual. By setting these boundaries early on, you minimize the chances of conflicts arising later. It also allows others to plan accordingly and respect your time. 
Setting boundaries doesn't have to be rigid. It's about creating a framework that works for you and communicating that to others. 7. Handle guilt effectively. Feeling guilty about saying no is normal, but it's important to manage it. Guilt often comes from a place of caring too much about what others think or, or fearing that saying no will harm the relationship. But remember, saying no is a form of self-care. It's okay to prioritize your own needs, and doing so doesn't make you a bad friend or family member. When guilt arises, try to reframe your thoughts. Instead of thinking, I'm letting them down, remind yourself, I'm taking care of myself so I can be there for them in the long run. Guilt can also be alleviated by focusing on the quality of the time you do spend with others, rather than the quantity. 8. Use a gentle tone. The way you say no can make a big difference in how your message is received. Using a gentle tone can help soften the refusal and reduce the chance of hurt feelings. For instance, instead of a flat, no, I can't do that, you might say, I really wish I could help, but I have other commitments right now. A gentle tone shows empathy and consideration for the other person's feelings. It's not just what you say, but how you say it that matters. Even in writing, the choice of words can convey kindness and understanding. Phrases like, I appreciate you thinking of me, or it means a lot that you asked, can make your no feel more like a thoughtful decision rather than a rejection. 9. Be consistent. Consistency is key when setting boundaries. If you say no once, be prepared to stick to it, even if you're pressured to change your mind. This can be difficult, especially if others are persistent, but being consistent helps reinforce your boundaries and teaches others to respect your decisions. For example, if you've told your friend that you can't meet up because you need to study, don't give in if they keep asking. Consistently standing by your decisions shows that you take your own boundaries seriously and others will learn to respect that over time. 10. Reflect and adjust. After you've said no, take some time to reflect on the experience. How did it feel? Was the other person understanding? Did you communicate effectively? Reflection helps you understand what works best for you and can improve how you handle similar situations in the future. If something didn't go well, think about what you might do differently next time. Maybe you need to be clearer, or perhaps you realise that your boundaries weren't as firm as you thought. Reflection isn't about beating yourself up, it's about learning and growing so that you can continue to maintain healthy relationships without sacrificing your own well-being. Thanks for watching this video on balancing personal relationships and learning how to say no. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content from Learn With Manzi. Share your experiences and tips in the comments below.